let's talk about the anatomy of flowering plants but firstly what is anatomy it is the branch of botany dealing with the internal organization of the plants the foundation of plant anatomy was laid down by n grew the term tissue was also coined by him he is known as the father of anatomy what are tissues they are a group of similar or dissimilar cells that perform a common function and have a common origin therefore they are known as a tissue tissues are classified into two main groups that is the meristematic tissue and the permanent tissue let's see how the plant tissue is divided into the meristematic tissue and the permanent tissue the permanent tissue is further divided into simple permanent tissues and complex permanent tissues the simple permanent tissues are the parenchyma colenchyma and sclerenchyma while the complex permanent tissues are the xylem and the phloem a question was asked in the aims entrance examination 2008 the cells of the quiescent center are characterized by having dense cytoplasm and prominent nuclei having light cytoplasm and small nuclei dividing regularly to add up to the corpus and dividing regularly to the tunica and the correct answer is having a light cytoplasm and small nuclei now what are meristematic tissues These tissues consist of cells that retain the power of division the protoplasm within the cell is dense the vacuole is very small or almost absent these cells are isodiametric without the intercellular spaces the nucleus is bigger in size the cells of the meristematic tissues have thin cellulosic cell wall the cells are metabolically very highly active with high surface area per unit volume and the nucleocytoplasmic ratio the ergastic substances are absent colorless protoplastids are present in the cells let's classify the meristems the meristems have been classified under various aspects but beginning with the origin and development promeristems that is the primordial meristems a group of cells which represents primary stages of meristematic cells they are found at the apex or in plural the apices of embryonic roots and shoots they give rise to the primary meristems the primary meristems originate from the promeristems found at the shoot and the root apices at the apex of leaves and the intercalary paths they in turn give rise to the primary permanent tissue the secondary meristems are not present from the beginning of the formation of an organ but develop at a later stage they give rise to the secondary permanent tissue example is interfascicular cambium cork and the cambium in dicots now coming to the position that is the meristems developing on the basis of position apical meristem these cells or tissues are found at the apices of stem and root due to continuous division the root and the stem increase in length the apical meristem helps the plants to grow in length here we can see the meristematic tissues at the apex at the intercalary position at the lateral position that is towards side in between and at the apex that is at the tip what is intercalary meristem the tissues are intercalated between permanent tissues that is the stem of grasses equisetum they are especially responsible for increase in the length of the stems of the grasses what are lateral meristems 
these meristems are present along the lateral sides of stem and roots they divide in the tangential plane giving rise to the secondary permanent tissues on the inner and outer side and lead to the increase in the thickness of the girth of the plant body examples are the intrafascicular cambium intrafascicular cambium and cork cambium too let's see the apical meristem located at the tips of stems and roots and the function is growth and increase length at the tips similarly coming to the intercalary meristems between the tip and the base of stems and leaves growth and increase in length in between the nodes lateral meristems at the sides of stems and roots it also helps in growth and increase in diameter as well which one of the following is not a lateral meristem intrafascicular cambium interfascicular cambium phylogen or a intercalary meristem and the correct answer is the intercalary meristem now the meristems have been divided on the basis of plane of cell division that is the mass meristem the cells divide anticlinally in all planes so that the mass of cells is formed example is formation of spores cortex pith and endosperm plate meristem the cells divide anticlinally in two planes so plate like area is increased example is formation of epidermis and the lamina of leaves rib or file meristem the cells divide anticlinally in one plane so row or columns of cells are formed example is formation of a lateral root on the basis of function protoderm they are the outermost meristematic cells they form skin or epidermis of plant and the epidermal tissue system procambium are the innermost meristematic cells form the primary xylem primary phloem and the cambium ground meristem form ground or fundamental tissue such as the hypodermis cortex pith or pericycle here we can see the apical meristem and the three primary meristem the protoderm the ground meristem and the procambium shoot apex organization it is present immediately above the youngest leaf primordia consists of meristematic cells lateral branches of stem and leaves are formed by the activity of shoot effects such as the apical cell theory as it was proposed by hofmeister and nageli according to this theory a single apical cell leads to the development of entire plant body applicable to algae most of the bryophytes and the pteridophytes next comes the histogen theory proposed by hanstein according to this theory shoot apex consists of following histogens dermatogen that is the outermost layer forms epidermis and epidermal tissue system periblem giving rise to the tissues between epidermis and the steel and prerome which is the innermost layer the central mass of cells which gives rise to the central steel the shoot apex organization here we can see the leaf primordium the tunica division the corpus differentiation the ground meristem and the procambium what is the tunica corpus theory it was proposed by schmidt which is based on the plane of division of cells according to this theory shoot apex consists of two distinct layers the tunica which is mostly single layered and forms the epidermis the cells of tunica are smaller than corpus and divides mostly by the anticlinal divisions corpus represents the central core with larger cells the cells divide preclinally sometimes tunica is multilayered and only the outer layer forms the epidermis and the remaining layers with corpus forms the cortex of shoot 
Let's talk about the root apex organization. It consists of mass of meristematic cells, is not responsible for the formation of lateral roots. Root cap or calyptrogen is present due to which the root meristem becomes subterminal in position. If the root cap is independent in origin, it arises from the dermatogens. Regarding the organization of root apex, following theories have been put forward. Firstly, the copper cap theory proposed by Schwepp is comparable with the tunica carpus theory of the shoot apex. Corpor means body and the cap means the cap. Let's see the lateral section of the root apical meristem. The protoderm, this is the endodermis, this is the ground meristem, procambion, the quiescent center, root apical meristem cells and the root cap. The quiescent center theory was proposed by Close. According to this theory, root apex consists of an inverted cup-like structure, the quiescent center. The cells of this region have a very low mitotic activity, hence the word quiescent has been used. They have low amount of RNA, DNA and proteins surrounded by a layer of actively dividing cells responsible for the formation of different structures of roots. Now let's come down to the permanent tissues. They are composed of living or dead cells which are derived from the meristematic tissues but have lost their ability to divide. They are of three types, the simple tissues, made up of one kind of cells performing similar functions. That comes the parenchyma. These cells are found almost in all parts of plants such as the roots, the stems, leaves, fruits and seeds. These cells are isodiametric, spherical, oval or polygonal with the intercellular spaces. These cells are living and within the cellulosic cell wall. Here you can see the permanent fundamental tissues. This is parenchyma, the characteristic feature being unspecialized cells within the primary walls and the function is photosynthesis, secretion and storage. Colenchyma elongated cells with uneven primary walls living at maturity. The function is supports in leaves and stems. Sclerenchyma, the characteristic is elongated with thick secondary walls but they are dead at maturity and the function is simply to support.